Things get magical and mystical as a former neurosurgeon embraces the mystic arts to save humanity. Hey there guys, how are you? So welcome to the movie review of Doctor Strange. And you guys know one of my favorite sayings of all time is it's going to get a little bit magical and it's going to get a little bit mystical. And if ever that saying applied to a movie, Doctor Strange is that movie. And also, I wanted to let you know that this review is brought to you by D-Box, who is the world leader in immersive cinematic motion CD. Whenever something action-packed happens in the movie, you feel it in the chair. And speaking of D-Box, I actually drove three hours to attend a special screening of Doctor Strange in D-Box because I didn't just want to watch the movie, I wanted to feel the movie. So if you guys want to hear about my experience of watching this movie in D-Box, stay tuned until after the video. And along with that, I'm going to let you guys know how you can participate with D-Box Labs and win free Amazon gift cards. Yeah, so win free shit. Stay tuned until after the video. This movie stars Benedict Cumberbatch, who plays Doctor Strange. And by the way, on a quick side note, he makes a way better Doctor Strange than he did Khan. I'm just saying. And early on in the movie, he suffers a brutal injury that leaves him with a debilitating injury, and then he sets out on a journey to heal himself. Now, as far as Benedict Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange, I would say they casted the perfect person because I remember early reports of Joaquin Phoenix being up for the role of Doctor Strange and I'm glad they went with Benedict Cumberbatch in the long run. And I would say Benedict Cumberbatch does for Doctor Strange what Robert Downey Jr. does for Iron Man. Because as Doctor Strange, he brings a level of depth and substance to the character and you can buy into things like him being a doctor. Now the one thing I did notice about Benedict Cumberbatch's take on Doctor Strange it almost had a Hugh Laurie house vibe. Now the most obvious thing is both characters are doctors, but they're both very overconfident and both very addicted to their jobs and it was just very similar. And that's not a complaint, it's just an observation. It felt like some inspiration was taken from the character of House. Now let's talk about the character of Christine Palmer played by Rachel McAdams and she's fellow surgeon and love interest to Doctor Strange. Now as far as her character goes, I'm glad she didn't play that typical damsel in distress because the character of Christine Palmer felt like a real person. She had a purpose for being in the movie and she has a small role but nevertheless I was intrigued every time she was on screen because she well she felt like she was doing something relevant now let's talk about the style and tone of this flick now it's blatantly obvious the movie's visuals were strongly influenced by a few Christopher Nolan films and is there anything wrong with that no because what this movie does is it takes some really cool pre-established visual styles and expands on them for example you have Doctor Strange who gives up everything he leaves out for a foreign land to find answers and a way to heal himself and for me that was very reminiscent to Bruce Wayne's journey in Batman Begins where he leaves everything behind to go join the League of Shadows. Rub your chest. Your arms will take care of themselves. I love that line. This is one of those movies where anything that can happen will happen and a lot of the action scenes were very reminiscent to other movies like Inception or The Matrix. Now this movie is one big origin story. It tells how one man went from being a doctor to a mystical and magical badass and I love things like that. And in the realm of movie logic, making things make sense pertaining to the story, I felt like this movie did a really good job of explaining things and making things make sense. This is why Doctor Strange can do this and this is why he can't do that. Now I do have some negatives with the movie, but before I get into those, I first wanted to quickly mention Edge of Twelve. Da, 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 da. No matter how I say his name, even if I say his name right, someone in the comments will say I said it wrong. So here's his name right here. I'll let you read it for yourself and try to pronounce it for yourself because I can't do it. And he plays the character of Mordo, who is essentially the sidekick to Doctor Strange throughout this movie. He's almost like the roadie to Iron Man. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that. And if you've ever seen the movie Red Belt, well, you know this guy can play a badass. Now, let's talk about a few negatives I have with the movie Doctor Strange, and that's the villains of the film. Now, I love the Marvel movies. Boop, boop. Yeah, I'm a fanboy at times. But the one thing the majority of these movies have in common is they have weak antagonists. And the one big exception to that is the character Loki, played by Tom Hiddleston, who was charismatic and memorable. But besides him, for the most part, most of the villains we get in the Marvel Universe are a little bit lackluster. And the villainous character Cassilius, who's the bad guy in Doctor Strange, well, he's no exception to this. But as far as Cassilius goes in this movie, he was a bad guy, he did his job, but I just don't feel like anyone's gonna remember anything about the character as soon as they leave the theater. And speaking of bad guys and villains, I have one more complaint with this movie and it pertains to another villain that's in the movie for a very short amount of time and I assure you, this is not a spoiler. If you read the comics, you might know that this character's in the movie and it's not going to ruin the movie whatsoever even if you know that this character's in there because you don't know the outcome of the situation. So once again, it's not a spoiler. Everyone calm down. Now during the third act of the movie, Doctor Strange encounters one more villain of the film 
and he's this big CGI, bland, generic, one-dimensional monster. I'm a bad guy, and I'm going to destroy everything because I'm a bad guy. <sighs> yeah, it goes something like that. It was just so shoehorned in there, and it felt so CGI'd. It took me right out of the movie, and it reminded me of another movie that came out in 1997. Here it is. It felt like a very overly heavy-handed CGI sequence, and in all fairness to Doctor Strange, the effects look way better than this shit right here. But I'm just saying it reminded me of that. Now, here are my final flicking thoughts on Doctor Strange. For the most part, the characters in the film felt like they had depth and substance. I felt like they were complex. I really bought into Doctor Strange. I bought into Benedict Cumberbatch becoming this guy who was a doctor to becoming this guy who wears a red cape and does magical shit. All the over-the-top action sequences were very immersive. The camera work, it made you feel like you were in the environment and it was really cool and interesting to watch. And sometimes throughout this movie, the movie's more violent than you might expect. There's one scene where a character falls off of a building and lands on the ground and you're like, Holy shit. So as far as Doctor Strange goes, he's one of the Marvel characters I didn't really know much about, but now he's one of the most interesting and intriguing characters and I can't wait to see more. So I'm going to give Doctor Strange Ugh. Like I said, my only real complaints with the movie were the antagonists were forgettable and a little bit bland, and during the third act of the movie, things get bogged down at times. So that's my take on the magical and mystical Doctor Strange, now here's my question to you guys and let me know down below, what do you guys think about Doctor Strange, or what is your favorite movie? pertaining to magic. I'm gonna go with this because I really love the character of Merlin. Now, let's talk about my D-Box experience. Now, once again, if you guys don't know what D-Box is, it's a very immersive way to watch movies. You sit in this chair and it's synced with the action of the movie. Now, let me give you an example of this. When I was watching Doctor Strange, there's a car accident scene where Doctor Strange drives off of a cliff and when I was sitting in my D-Box chair, it was shaking like this, my head hit the ground, and I felt like I was in the car with Doctor Strange. And then I woke up five hours later, and my hands were crushed. And the coolest thing is, if you guys want to enhance the movie watching experience, you can become part of their research and design process by joining the D-Box Labs online community. So yeah, if you guys want to make the movie watching experience better and more immersive, they want to know your thoughts, your opinions, click the link down below and answer a few quick questions, and be entered in for a chance to win $250 Amazon gift cards. Free stuff! And at the end of the questionnaire, you'll be invited to join D-Box Labs online research community where you can participate in live forums and discussions. And just by participating, you guys will be entered into $500 Amazon gift cards and free tickets to D-Box movies. So yeah, free stuff, talking about movies, giving your thoughts, making movies better, it's like, why not? But anyway guys, like I said, links are down below. Give your thoughts on movies, give your thoughts on D-Box, and really help them enhance the movie watching experience. Thanks for watching as always guys, and if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, that way I can see you next time.